welcome to your reading. I'm so happy to be back. Um, there are people who are asking me to do a love reading, so I will do that today. Merry Christmas. I hope that this video finds you in good spirits and that everything is going your way. We're going to do a general reading today for all of us and the energy that we're all in together. When we're talking about love, this could be about twin flame, it could be soulmate cycle, whichever it is that you have going on in your life, because not everybody has a twin flame. Some people just have deep soul connections that they're working with right now. Remember, this is a general reading and will not resonate with every single person. Energies can be reversed, so assign the roles as you please. And if it doesn't resonate with you, just stick around because there might be something that you need to hear. These messages are timeless, so it doesn't really matter when you were brought to this channel. This reading, there's probably something in it for you. If you're wanting to know about the 1212 portal, which was the last reading that I did because I took a couple weeks off, uh, that is on the screen right above. And I also have suggested videos at the end. I am doing personal readings, so check out the description box down below. And it still has a discount for the holidays for readings as well. Because if this reading does not resonate with you, you might need a more personal uh, touch and so you just reach out to me and we'll take a look at what's going on in your life if you like this reading or entertaining some way don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell this way you get notified as soon as i post something new i want to thank all the people who have subscribed uh if you're new here thank you for coming and checking out my channel um and if you have not yet subscribed and you'd like to support this channel then please take a second to do so here we go let's get right into it it's really interesting, before I get started, uh, I want to explain how energy works. Sometimes uh, what I talk about right now is going on in your life at the moment. Sometimes it takes a couple weeks, sometimes it might take a couple months. I have people who watch my videos sometimes and then they go, oh, that's not happening for me. Uh, you know, And I do that too when I listen to other readers, it's kind of funny. Oh, this isn't my reading, this must not be for me. And then they come back like a month later and they listen to the video and they're like, oh my gosh, like every." <laughs> It's, it's all there. So I suggest after you see this, um, especially your monthly readings for any reader that you go to, I suggest listening to those again because sometimes the energy, you don't see it yet. It's so fluid that you might not see it at the moment. So let's see what's going on in, in our world. Here we go. One, two, three, four, Five. So we're looking at the Christmas energy for those of you or the holiday energy for Kwanzaa energy, whatever it is that you celebrate, Hanukkah or even Diwali, whichever it is. We're looking at whatever this energy is that December is bringing. We're bringing the year into a close. And what I'm going to do is kind of read the energy for right now. And then I'm going to go ahead and do probably a, a 2022 reading to see what's going on with this cycle. OK. All right. So the overall energy of what we're talking about right now, I want to get a theme card as well because I want to know where we're going. Okay. Because the weeks are going to, you know, the days are going to start to slow down as we get closer to the new year and then it speeds up at the new year. So it's supposed to do that so that you'll take time with yourself. So don't, um, don't get too down in the dumps for those people who, you know, you're so go, go, go until Christmas and then bam, Christmas comes and it's like, you don't know what to do with yourself after that, right? <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, there it is. This does happen. Okay. So the, um, the interesting, they want me to see that too. The overall theme for what's happening right this moment, and this happens like every year around the holiday, so it's not really surprising me, is loneliness. So what happens is, is um, I don't know why it is, but when the energy slows down, we start to kind of look at our ourself and our relationships. And even when we're in relationships with people, it's like we still feel a sense of loneliness. Um, you could be at a party, like having a good time, and with lots of people around you and still feel really lonely and not even know like where's that loneliness coming from. And it's about you taking the courage to really look at that loneliness and look at those feelings, look at that discontentment and say, um, what, well, it's going to bring me success. Like what is it? And I really believe that it slows down like this so that we will analyze our lives and make new resolutions for the new year. I mean, it's pretty much like, um, I wanted to say the word cyclical, but the, I don't think that makes sense. So let me think. It's pretty much something that happens like every year. Even when I was a kid, like I get so excited for Christmas and Christmas is over and I got my presents. There was a sense of, I didn't know if it was sadness. What is it? Is it loneliness? What is this feeling? And it's really just 
um, discourse so that you will make plans for the future because one is new beginnings, you know, coming in and welcoming the new beginnings. Um, the month of two, which is February, is then you start to balance out your life. You know, one, it's like we go for it. Bam, 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 right? And then two is when we start to really kind of look at everything and start to balance in our life and see what's going on. You know, and then the sun comes out and really starts to shine around March, which is the three month. And so that is the month of uplifting yourself and uplifting your community and feeling really good. And then so on and so on and so on, right? So each month has its own little like theme based on the number that it is. Okay, so once again, it's like we're all in, the, we're gonna, or if you're not there yet, you're going to be in this energy of looking at the things that hurt your heart. Looking at, and some of you guys, it's going to be grief, okay? So don't, don't get like hung up on it. Some of you guys, it's going to be doubt. You know, some of you guys are going to be looking at the pain in your heart is the grief that you never took care of or the grief of someone not being around anymore or not having these relationships with someone anymore because the, the other one is relationships, looking at your relationships. So some of you guys are doubt, you know, it's because of doubt, like the doubt you feel about your relationships, the doubt you feel about your career, the doubt you feel about your life. And it's like that's supposed to come up so that you will make new decisions. It's all a, a beautiful plan on making us review our lives. And so sitting down and saying, okay, where are the places in my life where I feel like I'm not being successful or I don't, I'm not having the things that I want, okay? It's really just about helping us step into our power and taking care of ourselves more. Some of you guys, it's gonna be about your relationships. Maybe you need to look at the people that are around you. So they wanted me to go there first, but let's go ahead and look at the overall energy. Okay, so there is someone who has been feeling like they're left out in the cold. Okay, and I have to say someone because I don't know who's watching this because this is overall energy for all of us. So someone or maybe both people, both parties feel that they've been left out in the cold. So there could be also a lack mindset somewhere. Maybe they're isolating themselves. Uh, maybe just a poverty mindset as well. But this is generally the card where someone feels like they're not getting the value that they need in life. And sometimes people can love us, but they're not loving us the way that we need to be loved. They're loving us the way that they need to love, that they think someone should be loved. And that sometimes doesn't correspond with how you believe you should be loved. You might be thinking that the person really doesn't love you when that's really all the love they could give. Oh, they love you as much as they can like, as much as they can, and that's not very much, right? Okay, so somebody in the situation has taken the high road, high ground, I'm the emperor, you come to me, um, I'm waiting for you to make the first move, uh, people come to me, I don't go to them, that's the emperor-like mindset. So this could be the person that was left out in the cold because of that crappy mindset. Uh, it could also be the reason why someone was left out in the cold was because of that mindset. Like they, they could have put themselves in this position because they had that attitude or that behavior. And then the other person was like, well, pff, I don't want to have anything to do with you if you're going to act like that. Right. Or it could be the other way around. Like they're like, you know what? I'm better than you. Maybe it's not even that I'm better than you. It's like this domination like feeling, you know, they have just a, the emperor is a person who has a lot of control or that like to control life, you know. Um, and so maybe it's just that they have this high road kind of attitude like, no, people come to me. I don't go to them. You know, girls chase me or guys chase me. Um, I don't chase them. And then that could be what's leaving them out in the cold or vice versa, okay? Or they could be leaving you out in the cold because of the way they think. There we go. Um, but really, there there is success at the end of this story because this is what we have. We have the Ten of, Ten of Pentacles, which says that someone has been left out in the cold because of an emperor way of being and... Maybe they're going to take a look at that way that they were being and be a different way so that they can get themselves out of the cold, you know, or uh, have a conversation with you or have a, you, you, you know, have a relationship with you. 
or vice versa. Maybe you have a relationship with someone else because now you're looking at, well, maybe I'm being a little bit cocky, you know? Maybe I'm expecting way too much. Maybe I do need to give a little. Maybe it's equal give and take in a relationship. Maybe the reason why I haven't had equal give and take in a relationship is because I don't give equal give and take. That could be it as well. So I think that there's going to be some sort of reviewing of the life, even though I don't have the judgment card. I do feel that very strongly because it's the end of December. Reviewing our life and then moving into 2022 with a new perspective of how we want to do things. All right. So the thing that's coming towards you, so this makes total sense from what I was just saying. They're just backing me up with the cards here. So I'm going to move these over because the thing that's actually um, coming towards you is they're going to come towards you as the full energy. This full energy is the best energy when we want reconciliation of relationships or we want a relationship to grow or get bigger or we want a relationship to have a chance you want to be in the full energy because the emperor energy is just too rigid, too stoic, too, too strong of an energy to be in when you're trying to learn another person or when you're trying to understand someone from a different point of view. When you're trying to have a new beginning through your innocence and your spontaneity. I mean, it's all about just being a free spirit, not holding back anymore. It's a little bit reckless and it's, it's got a lot of risk taking to it, the energy as well. So that's really good because um, if you're, if like I said, if you're trying to have a reconciliation, which I don't see the card of reconciliation, but I do feel that because lots of twin flames, we have a runner and a chaser. So um, if that is the case, then you want that like the whole reason why they run is because they're acting like the emperor. The whole reason why um, they, they're not chasing at the moment is because they're acting like an emperor or something like that. And we really want that energy to change into a more innocent way of being of just like having a leap of faith and just jumping in and saying, let's try it, you know, very good. Okay, so the thing that is holding this relationship back or holding the situation back is the Knight of Pentacles, which is um, just stuck energy. So somebody's not moving. Somebody that should be moving is not moving. Um, somebody is not advancing. Somebody is not um, putting in the free spirited energy in order to move forward. So hopefully they capitalize on that. The energy is there for them to take, but everybody has free will. So sometimes we can feel the energy and we choose not to follow our intuition. I really do hope that this person ends up following their intuition so that you guys can have the relationship that you want because um, them not following that intuition is just holding this this back, okay? So um, the Nine of Pentacles is also about things that are routine and somebody just really conserving themselves. Um, they could be stuck in like perfectionism or boredom or just feeling stuck in general. And then that feeling is the thing that is, or just even the thought processes. Like you can have the feeling of being a free spirit and wanting to take action, but your thoughts are what holds you back or your belief systems or what, you know, the way you've always done things kind of holds you back from being, you know, having the abundance and doing the successful things that bring what you want in life, okay? So the thing that is actually helping this situation is that somebody has seen that the devil has been controlling their life. So they've seen their shadow self or they've seen the restrictions that are in their life or these times of attachments, maybe addictions. Um, maybe they have released some limiting beliefs that is going to help them move forward in this kind of free spirited way of being. Um, but it is about them exploring their dark thoughts. So somebody has been exploring their dark thoughts through this Christmas season, and uh, they are, they're gonna get the intuition to take a leap of faith. Let's just hope that they actually do it, okay? Um, the overall outcome is the Queen of Cups. So lots of love, lots of love. Like she's, she gives the most love in the world. So the overall outcome is, is actually really beautiful because Cups are love. It's about compassion and calmness and comfort. Uh, and she is very dependable and she just, it's just going to be very dependable, whatever it is. So if the person does, whoever is you or the other person, if you, one of you guys takes that leap of faith, the one who is the runner takes the leap of faith and actually moves towards, um, the person who's been trying to connect with them, 
uh, then, you know, it could be, it could be very successful, actually a really successful love. Let's go ahead and pull a little bit more on that. Actually, let's do this. Okay. Okay. So we do have a new beginning in love. It's being um, presented to both parties and uh, the prosperity, it's time for prosperity to begin with these two lovers. But the person, the the person who's been running has to follow their intuition because God has been trying to tell them for a while now to move towards this other person. Uh, there's a, there was a lot of fear, but hopefully they worked through it. Yep. They had to emotionally withdraw in order to follow their intuition and actually to look at their shadow self to see what in the world could be holding them back from this relationship with this person. Um, and they're going to have triumph with this because they've seen the truth. And they're starting to choose more wisely based on what their intuition says. And I've, I've been talking to a lot of people and their partners are not following their intuition. Like it's obvious that this person is trying so hard to be something that they're not because that's what they think other people believe that they should be. Uh, and it's controlling their lives and they're not happy. And it's like they're, they think they're, gonna, they're happy because they're pleasing other people, but they're not. They're really not. It's making them more and more unhappy because of it. So basically, uh, one of the things I told one of my friends was that if you, it's like how to win friends and influence people in that book. Uh, they talk about like people's perspective. So first of all, if you take a picture with someone uh, and you look at the picture to decide whether or not that is a great picture to post like on social media or something like that, who do you generally look at? You or the other person? The answer is you. you. You look at yourself to determine whether or not. So that's how everybody comes to you with when you go to people and you say, hey, what should I do about this? And what should I do about that? They're always going to tell you what's best for them in the situation, not what's best for you. And they'll disguise it as in what's best for you. But the reality of it is, is they're seeing it through their own glasses. They're seeing it through their own life experience to tell you what they think. Um, and a lot of the times it's like, what's the win-win situation they're looking at? Or sometimes we don't even say what's win-win, like what's, what's in it for me is what they're looking at. You know, hopefully you'll get a partner that says, well, win-win situation. This is what you want. This is what I want. How can we make that go well? But a lot of times, um, people are in relationships where the person's like, what's in it for me? Like they don't even care about your feelings. So you're going around asking people, like, for instance, if you go to a car dealership, this is, was in the book. It was one of the examples. If you go to a car dealership and you say, hey, I just want a car that's really good for me, the car salesman is going to sell you the really good car that's good for them to sell. <laughs> that, you know, they'll make it sound like it's good for you. So just keep that in mind when you're talking to other people, when you're trying to choose wisely. The best thing to do is to go with your intuition. And a lot of people are really afraid to follow their intuition because they feel like it's emotional and not very logical and, and because, um, and I just, it kind of just scares them or maybe they tried to follow it before in their life and it didn't go as well. Uh, but I really believe that, especially those of you guys who are adults, I mean, you're adults now, you're more mature. And so I think you can discern what's good intuition and what's not. All right. All right. Um, yeah, it's starting to speed up and we do have a celebration with, um, with your guides celebrating and you and your lover celebrating. So we do have that in the energy is that we do have the opportunity to have this love come together. It's whether or not the person will follow their intuition. And that is basically what's happening with so many people right now. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and get some advice. What, what should we do in the meantime? What um, should we do? Let's do, I'm, I say, I'm gonna do three cards on, on each side because I don't know who's who when I read the energy like this. So we'll say runner and chaser, how about that? So on the left side is gonna be the runner and on the right side is gonna be the chaser. And let's find out what we should be doing. Okay. Okay, one two and three and one two and three 
Oh, these are good. Okay, runner, are you ready? If you're the one who keeps running from the situation um, for whatever reason, anxiety, fear, uh, self-doubt, I don't know what it is, but whatever the reason is that you're running from the situation, um, <laughs> the way you're behaving, if you continue to run, then nothing will come of the situation. It will always be what this is. And, if, and, and that is discouraging and disappointing. The person, if you're the runner, the person is no longer going to chase you. They're just not going to do it. Okay. So um, it's up to you runner to make things happen because the chaser is no longer chasing. They've chased you enough. <laughs> um, and runner, understand that you are good enough. You are good enough for this. Okay, you got this. And the last bit of advice for the runner is to meditate and contemplate, hone into your intuition and really follow it. If you don't trust your intuition, then uh, you need to meditate more. You need to do more inner child work. You need to write down all the times that you've made good decisions that have worked well for you. Because a lot of you guys are not trusting your intuition because you're looking at your life right now and you're seeing the bad decisions that you've made. And that's scary to look at your life and say, I have made so many bad decisions and why would I trust myself? But I'm going to tell you more than likely, runner, that you made those decisions based on someone else's perception. You made those decisions by going to other people and asking them what you should do in your life instead of asking yourself what you should do in your life. So maybe you went to a mother or a father or a sister or a brother. You went to someone and you've been asking them how to live your life instead of deciding that you're going to live your life the way you want to live your life. You've been trying to impress someone that cannot be impressed, that never will be impressed. You're trying to get acknowledgement and appreciation and um, love from someone that you're never going to be able to impress. You're never going to be able to make that person happy. And I was telling my friend that I was like, what if you told your person, what if, the, what if you told them no matter what you do, you will never make that person happy. Like for instance, if it's a mom or a dad, so like for instance, in my case, I will never make my mother happy. I had to be told that by someone. You will never make your mother happy. Stop trying. And that was so freeing to me. It, it hurt at first to hear that. Like really, wow, really? Yeah, you're never gonna make that woman happy. Oh, okay. And then as I started to realize that, it started to, I became more free in the situation to say, why am I living my life to make you happy when you're never going to be happy? Why don't I just live my life to make me happy? That makes a lot more sense, logically. But there's a little boy or a little girl inside uh, that is always with you that is trying so hard to make someone else happy besides themselves. And that's what's holding you back from your lover and your love. It's what's holding you back from your happiness. Because I'm going to tell you right now, some of you guys are dealing with people you're trying to make happy that never wanted you to be happy in the first place because they weren't. They actually wanted you to be unhappy they actually did not want you to have a good life. They've led you in this direction on purpose. And that was hard for me to hear as well. So let me be the voice of reason for those people who are trying to make someone happy that that person never wanted you to be happy. Um, like I remember uh, I was talking to my mom and she was really upset and uh, I was trying to help her. And she looked right at me and said, why are you happy? And I thought she was just in a state of depression. <laughs> so I kind of just took it with a grain of salt, but she was for real. She was asking God, why in the heck was I happy? And now that I look back on that, I'm like, she never wanted me to be happy. She expected me to not be happy. She didn't want me to be happy. So 
it's without beating a dead horse, I just want you to know there are people out there that do not want you to be happy and sometimes they're people we love. Okay? All right, let's look at the chaser. So now that we understand that about the runner, let's talk about the chaser right now. Okay, chaser, hold on to your breath because the energy is gaining momentum. Your runner is learning big lessons right now. Huge lessons. Like I just taught him a huge lesson. Like you're never going to make that person happy. So make yourself happy. Okay. It's a big revelation. Okay. Um, so Chaser, expect a powerful change because it is coming. It is coming and it is coming like it's just going to come out of nowhere and slap you in the face. Like you, I know by now you're probably like, this person's never coming. I've been waiting forever. This person ain't ever coming. You know, I get that for some of you guys. I totally get what you're saying, but I can't wait till it does because you're wrong because <laughs> it's coming. God's been working on this for a long time because you're really, really ch close to achieving your goal. This person just has some, they have some realizations to get to. They need to get to that full energy. They need to feel the full energy. They need to feel their intuition. They have a lot of meditation and contemplation to still do. Um, and But it's gaining momentum. It's going in that direction. Let's go ahead and see what each side is thinking. So I'm going to use white for the chaser and black cards for the runner. Here we go. So let's find out what these words are. And then after this, we're gonna close out. I'll do a 2022 reading to find out what that is gonna look like in this journey, okay? All right, we have the runner. One, two, three, and four. All right, and let's see what the chaser is thinking. We you know what you're supposed to do, but let's see what well, let's see what we're thinking on this 5D level. It's awesome. All right. All right, chaser. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so runner says to the chaser, right? You are my rose. Um it's easier to stay away now than to lose you later. So they think that they're going to lose you. That's why they are really taking, taking it slow. Um, there is a strange and deep connection between us. They're still trying to understand that connection. Um, they don't fully understand it. I think they get it on the 5D level, but I think on the 3D level, they're still trying to understand it. They're still trying to understand how you guys... How, uh, how this is supposed to like, how does this fit? They don't get it. Instead of just putting all their, their hope and belief in God, that God is going to make this work out exactly the way that it's supposed to, um, they get stuck in like they, they really, they feel like they're going to mess, they can mess this up. So they're trying to understand where, where do they fit? Because it says, well, now that I know this, where do we go from here? Well, now that I, I think I, I think I fully understand who you are, where do we go though? I, I just don't understand. So there's a lot of not really knowing where to go and what to do. All right. And the chaser says, my love for you is without bound. Oops. Okay. You are my muse. So you're giving this person some inspiration and some reason to keep doing some things that they're doing. And I know you are my other half. And I'm lost in the ocean that is you. So there's some deep love on the other side. Um, and they want to chase towards you, but they're not supposed to. So they're not. <laughs> All right, guys. If you like this reading or entertain in some way, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. This way you get notified as soon as I post something new. Bye. Well, I'm all for Christmas.